One of the iconic bosses of Mortal Kombat and a character that's had a varied display in the world of tournament level gameplay is Shinnok, the fallen elder god. A character most likely recognized competitively with Mortal Kombat X, this fighter has always had a unique take on the whole steal an opponent's fighting style idea, an idea that was definitely the most distinct in MKX. Now I'll say straight away that it isn't a bad thing that Shinnok's most remembered in gameplay with his final appearance. His only other two mainstream games in the franchise were in both MK4 and MK Armageddon, and those games aren't exactly the most familiar in a high-level sense for most fans. He's certainly the most interesting in his current final version, but that doesn't mean a hefty amount of legacy did not transfer over to where he currently is now in a game that many people adore for good reasons. An icon of the 3D age of Mortal Kombat and somebody that's been in every generation one way or another, this is the competitive history of Shinnok. In Arcade Mortal Kombat 4, Shinnok was the only character who could even count as a final boss, as Goro, the character many people will remember struggling with the most, was not actually in the game until the console ports, leaving Shinnok as the one and only threat remaining. And that doesn't really mean anything in this video because it's about Shinnok anyway, but I thought you might find that interesting. I use the term threat very loosely, however, as unfortunately Shinnok in MK4 is widely regarded as not very good. There are a number of reasons for this, and usually I'd start a game by listing off the special moves, notable combo strings, you know, the standard stuff at this point. But here's the problem, Shinnok did not have a single unique attack in any way, and relied entirely on stealing fighting styles from the other fighters to get going. Shinnok enters the match and a variety of special move inputs will activate a sound effect and now let you have complete control of whatever character that you picked. Jarek is back 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 low kick, Sub-Zero is down back low punch, Tanya is back forward down block, you get the idea. After a set period of time, Shinnok loses control of that character and reverts back to normal, but from there you can input another character or the same character if that's what you want. The direct comparison you'd make here is Shang Tsung in the previous games, which is completely fair enough. It is the same idea on paper. Different inputs will morph into different characters for a short time. But this is where the morph mechanic hinders Shinnok a ton more than it would hinder Shang Tsung. Shang Tsung at least had his own moves before the choice of morphing even happens. You could play a full game with Shang without morphing and he's still his own character. Shinnok, however, is not the same idea. If you do not morph, you have zero moves besides the universal buttons and strings that every character has access to. You have to morph here, because the only thing that Shinnok has that is his own, besides a cool hat, is a spear weapon that's uh, alright maybe. It's got some range and a low sweep, but like, that's not worth picking a whole character for. Everyone has a weapon. Another issue is the visual indication that a morph has taken place. Shang will straight up become that character. You can see it. You can see it when he morphs back too. It's very easy to know what's happening and how to tactically morph into someone else should the match call for it. Shinnok has only a very faint sound effect that in the middle of a match could be instantly missed. If you need to keep a timer in your head for when the morph is ready to go, it's a bit of a pain. Otherwise, in the heat of the moment, you might input a character's special move that you've changed into, but it just so happens to be a morph input of a character you didn't want. And now you're stuck until it changes again. And yes, that has happened to me. It's not all bad though. The fighting style change with Shinnok gives him everything a character has, including their weapon. Morph into the character and input their weapon command, and now you have Sub-Zero's Ice Wand or Reptile's Busted Axe that has the infinite that I've mentioned many, many videos ago. It gives Shinnok possibly one of the only unique elements about him that a weapon can be chosen, in a way, because you can morph and then equip it. This was before MK Gold, where characters could actually choose their weapon and character select, so this was something at least. Unfortunately though, after that, it really is a basic case of an awkward feeling character with no identity and has to simply use the moves of every other character in the game for a short time. It's better for bonus characters like Chameleon or something to have this mechanic, but when other characters have this stolen moves idea, you can at least see what's going on. 
Shinnok has the smallest amount of help to see what the morph has actually done. And it's meant to be like a main roster character. He's supposed to be the big bad guy of MK4 and sadly it just doesn't feel like it. If you're going to spend an entire game using the fighting style of Tanya or something, just pick Tanya. If you combine multiple characters in a round, it does make you more unpredictable, but the morph itself is so clumsy to manage that you risk being just as confused as your opponent sometimes. It is a shame, because the story of MK4 and the, I suppose, timeline of mythologies makes Shinnok a really important part of the story and lore. The story of Quan Chi and Shinnok together and the stuff that it led to down the line. Shinnok was a cool idea on paper, but in MK4 he just didn't really work. Thankfully, however, the next time we see this style of play with the character, it would be much, much better. Mortal Kombat Armageddon is the next time Shinnok is playable, which is a whole nine years later. This time round, though, Shinnok was made into more of his own character, with his own specials and the existence of a pretty powerful amulet staff he used as his weapon. Shinnok was one of the game's more ranged-focused characters, and did stand out in some ways as he had access to a lot of unbreakable damage. The first special is a teleport attack, but this move sucks. It's really slow and really unsafe. It looks cool, but mechanically does nothing for him except get him punished. It's a move to be avoided, for sure. Outside of that though, Shinnok comes alive somewhat. This straight projectile he has doesn't look like much, but it is the key to a lot of scary situations that Shinnok can put you in. It's decent damage-wise, but the important thing is that it puts the opponent into this weird knockback animation. It doesn't knock them down, and this is useful for a few reasons, but we'll cover that shortly. Finally, Shinnok has an unblockable grab attack that appears from the ground. The skeleton hand appears and knocks down when it connects. You probably saw this move in MKX, as it is a major special move that is used for the Necromancer variation, and yeah, I told you there was legacy. But again, this special is core to Shinnok's game plan in Armageddon, and is one of the reasons his guaranteed damage is so decent. Now we have to talk about his stances, but sadly, like quite a few characters in this game, Shinnok is one of those characters that only uses a single stance. His hand-to-hand -hand is simply not good and provides nothing of value besides being very unsafe and offering no utility that the weapon stance doesn't do better. So the amulet staff, let's talk about it. Big thing about this weapon is the range it provides, as Shinnok is a character who wants to play a little more further out than most. Having a weapon with long reach does help the character out. An overall issue with the staff is that it's not very safe on block in general. But again, if you're playing at a range that isn't point blank, unsafe buttons do become a bit harder to punish. The issue is, a lot of his low pokes are very unsafe. I mean, look at that! How slow is that? It has a few usable buttons like up 2, which is a far reaching low, 441 leads to a knock up, but it's a very hit and run style stance. It is the fundamentals of Shinnok that makes him what he is in this game, and this is where I want to highlight his strongest area, which is guaranteed damage. Shinnok has a few means to get damage the opponent cannot either break or avoid, and it's due to a mixture of his throw and his skeleton special moves. First of all, his summoned fiend, that unblockable grab. This move can be used in a lot of instances to cement additional damage, as it cannot ever be broken. The first and most common is if his throw connects. This throw knocks the opponent into the air, but the most consistent use of this throw is to use the unblockable grab to hit them before they hit the ground. It makes your throw do around 20% damage each time. Unblockable grab can catch people mid-screen if you end a launch with his projectile. Remember the weird animation it puts them in? This keeps them standing, and the unblockable grab can be a nice extra thing to add on after it hits. Characters with unblockables that track are consistent in Armageddon, where if they use a combo breaker should they be launched, the knockdown frames of the breaker is enough to guarantee a free unblockable. Shinnok is no exception. If you launch him and he breaks, he gets a free 8% unblockable. He's not the only character to have this, but it always helps. The most broken thing about Shinnok, and trust me, that's not me saying he is overall broken, but this definitely is, is that he gets an infinite combo against the wall thanks to a combination of throw and straight projectile. Free throws in 3D MK work in a way that makes them meaty an opponent who is stuck in hitstone and unable to avoid a throw animation. 
You cannot tech throws in these games, and you can't block them either. Straight projectile with Shinnok, although it usually pushes back, has nowhere to go against the wall, and is so plus on hit that a free throw is granted. The issue is, Shinnok's throw launches them and gives a free projectile before they hit the ground. Projectile cannot be broken, and the next throw cannot be teched. You probably already know where I'm going with this, but you can loop the throw and projectile infinitely. And the only way out is to break during the throw animation. If you have no breakers whatsoever, GG's, shake my hand. Overall in Armageddon, Shinnok is considered a pretty weak character. I know that might be surprising, but he has a lot of identity here, but that doesn't necessarily mean powerful, just memorable. It's great that he has so much unbreakable damage, and yeah, the wall infinite helps him out, but the glaring issue is a lack of damage if you wanted to actually cash out. And the fact that he's a one-stance character where even the weapon stance is incredibly unsafe and only offers a few usable buttons doesn't really help him all that much. He is a character entirely built around his specials, which makes him rather one-dimensional. If you don't have mix-ups or pressure in a game like this, you're going to struggle against those with more overwhelming options than you do. And is Shinnok's range and unbreakable damage enough to compete with the stronger characters in this game? Sadly not. Two for two so far, where Shinnok just doesn't cut it, but there's still one more chance to make a difference. It would just take another nine years. It really did take nine years to play as Shinnok again. Strange coincidence, that is. But either way, Mortal Kombat X saw Shinnok as a playable character, and returned as the game's main villain. Now, Shinnok went through various versions in this game, but in the final version that everyone can play now, he is an incredibly good character. I've seen him in players' top fives before, and honestly, that's not an absurd statement to make, even with years more of development that the community has put through in 2023. He is just an absolute monster, but if we're looking at the strength of this character overall, we need to cover some of the various patches, because he's been changed quite a bit to where he is now. But before we do all that, I want to cover the basics first. It's probably easier to understand the changes once you've seen the moves before we go into it. Shinnok's special moves involve the Hell Sparks, possibly his most memorable move here, as it creates three pillars of energy that start close and end to the far side of the screen. Shinnok can meter burn any of these to create a burst that will allow for combo extensions on hit and on block will either be safe or extremely plus on block depending on what patch you were on. Amulet Blast is a close range strike that on meter burn is plus on block once more. This is also used for corner combos and it works as a combo on hit or plus on block situation. This changes a bit with Bone Shaper. Shoulder Charge looks really simple, but it is Shinnok's best armored move in the final version. One of the few characters that can meter burn the charge for armor and then meter burn again for a pop up. It moves him forward as well, which can escape certain setup characters like a Cyber Sub Zero or a Cyrax, for instance. In regards to individual buttons, Shinnok has an overhead launcher in back 3 and a low forward 4 that can be special cancelled. So immediately, there is an element of overhead low in the mix-up game, although the overhead is slower, so really talented players can react to both options, but it's tricky. Now, with the variations, Shinnok gets very interesting. Imposter Shinnok is the most iconic of the three variations, as this one takes his old MK4 design and expands it into a way that we haven't seen before. Shinnok gains two special moves here. The first is called Tricky Portal, an expanded idea of his Armageddon teleport. This can only be done in the air, but when Shinnok teleports, he has access to his airborne normals. This move allows Shinnok to be point-blank in an instant, can be used in mix-up situations while jumping, and also to cover space versus characters more known for their range control, forcing them to respect this option at all times. Now, the opponent can see the portal, and they can punish it on reaction if you just use it by itself, but in trickier situations, no pun intended, it's a real nightmare for some players. The final thing about Tricky Portal was that it was possible to use as an instant air with a certain controller technique. This was shown to us many years ago by the player Aris Adapted, 
Not to be confused with Aris the Tekken commentator and famous streamer though, although he did actually enjoy Mortal Kombat X a fair bit anyway. But either way, if the player uses their control stick to hold the down input, and then on the D-pad you press up twice, Shinnok will do this teleport as low to the ground as your execution allows. And it's by far the scariest version of the teleport, as it is so low to the ground, it's much harder to react to. The main actual special that Shinnok gets here is the Mimic. This is the special that channels his MK4 design and brings it back in a big way. The short of it is, Shinnok has a special move that will re-stand an opponent on hit and provide some plus frames for his next attack. The main feature of this attack is that Shinnok will steal one special move from each of the cast members. Once the move has been used, Shinnok has to steal it again to gain access to it for another time. A small note is that for a brief period after the Mimic has landed, Shinnok will actually deal slight increased damage as well. There are some characters where the steel isn't that great. It might result in a pretty decent combo or something, but fundamentally, this Mimic is best used as a vortex option. And those mix-ups are far better suited for characters where the Mimic will steal a move that sets up a combo. If the Mimic is a move that stuns the opponent, then Shinnok can open the combo with a mix-up into the stolen stun move and then end the combo in another Mimic, repeating the exact same situation again. This was the bread and butter for Imposter since day one, because the base moves include Amulet Strike, Shoulder Charge, and Hell Sparks. Imposter can control many parts of the screen, but also trap the opponent in a vortex situation should your mix-ups keep hitting. Bone Shaper is the second variation, and although it was a lot stronger once upon a time, it's still a very solid screen control and pressure variation. It is one of those variations where a few combo strings have been swapped to now include his scythe weapon, and it functions differently to the strings that it replaced. Shinnok will use a bone halberd in some of the other specials. The big string that's swapped out is Shinnok's long reaching forward two. It is now a much closer string, but it restands on the final hit and it can be special cancelled. So starting a combo with it can do decent damage, but ending a combo with it into a close range dark beam provides plus frames. Shinnok also gains a string from his forward three and forward four, with the forward four being your low option, so this low becomes much more powerful in Bone Shaper, as you can now confirm this on block or hit into combos or pressure. Special moves help the ranged gameplay here, as the Amulet Strike is now the Dark Beam, a full-on projectile that is fast and it does great damage. It is still plus on hit at close range, so in the corner situations and the like, this move can still be great to end combos with, but a projectile this fast paired with his other specials, Shinnok controls the entire screen in some ways. Bone Shaper has this low scoop attack. It does indeed hit as a low, and it knocks down by itself. It's got insanely good range, and the meter burn version of this launches for a combo. Now, it can be used on its own as a long-ranged punish, but one of the more common applications was to use this launching low in situations where a combo string might normally end in overhead. The final special is an unblockable ground pound, and it's pretty fast, all things considered. The meter burn version of this does more damage and it will knock down. An unblockable like this is super annoying for a character like Shinnok, because he can use dark beam, ranged low scoop, and hell sparks to already control tons of the screen, and now the opponent's on edge, waiting for an unblockable to jump over, it opens up more chances for Shinnok to catch you with a hell sparks or something. It is a final nail in the coffin for an already good ranged character. Sadly, it's not all top tier material, as one variation that has always been considered the weakest of the three is Necromancer. And it's a shame, because it's such a cool way to play. It just doesn't really excel at anything that the other variations can't do better. This variation is all about the bone hands and it looks sick. Shinnok gains a Devil's Flick special move. This does 10% damage and it tracks them. Kind of. And it's a mid. Meter burn this to give a higher damaging backhand that works the same way. This move doesn't track them consistently well though, as it has had a nasty habit on totally missing for Shinnok players in the past, and it's unfortunately not very reliable. All it takes is that one time for it to miss them narrowly, and you are in a terrible position. Shinnok has a guidable unblockable. This is a skeleton hand that falls from the sky, and once again you can meter burn this for more damage. The issue is though, it's got ridiculous wind-up. 
I've seen it used to decent effect in the past, but it's not a special that you can use for the whole round. Again, it's got so much recovery that if it totally misses them, Shinnok is in deep trouble. The main special here is Summoned Fiend, the return from MK Armageddon. This move isn't an unblockable this time, but it's quite fast and it offers a launch option on Meter Burn. Comboing from Hell Sparks can be a bit tricky, as the Hell Sparks use a lot of the combo gravity before the rest of the hits. Shoulder Charge can work in combos just fine, but sometimes it results in less damage, whereas the Summoned Fiend is a nice and consistent option that, off some strings, can give you chunky damage that you can rely on without having Shoulder Charge or something. It can give Shinnok a full combo anywhere on screen, as a run into forward 2-2 will always pick them up into whatever you want to end it with either a shoulder or something similar, even being able to meter burn a second time in the combo for a minimum 30%, which isn't the worst for being a full screen combo. As you might have expected though, these moves tend to work as a ranged option across the board. As like Bone Shaper and Imposter, Shinnok keeps the base specials like Hell Sparks, Shoulder Charge and Amulet Strike. The issue here however is that the Necromancer moves are more unreliable than those of the other two variations. And in many cases, with competitive Shinnok, especially in the game's prime time, players that wanted range and control would instead just pick Bone Shaper, leaving Necromancer in the dust as a variation that isn't exactly the worst thing in the game, but not as necessary or relevant as Bone Shaper and Imposter. Anyway, now we've covered the variations in detail, I want to give a brief history lesson over Shinnok, as he's had, shall we say, roughly three different journeys from launch to now. And I'll try to mention things as and when they happened, although, bear with me, it's been a very long time. When the game was brand new, Shinnok was an almost unfinished character. He didn't have his back three overhead at this time, and his now low forward four was the back three input. He also couldn't meter burn his Hell Sparks on block, which meant that his pressure lied in Amulet Strike, which was far worse for extended pressure than Hell Sparks was. Now, to be fair, Imposter stole some rather broken moves originally. The most infamous was Jax. Shinnok stole the unblockable launching Ground Pound, which was actually an infinite against Jax unless he used Breaker. This was fixed, and another move was stolen instead, so this no longer happens. The first patch gave Shinnok the overhead, and this was monumental. Previously, the mix-up was Strike Throw, an imposter, as the increased throw damage after Mimic was still powerful, but there wasn't much else to keep people on their toes. The moment overhead was given to this character, the vortex of imposter began. Another change was that Shinnok could now meter burn his Hell Sparks on block, Previously, this wasn't possible, and it made Hellsparks incredibly unsafe in a lot of situations. But with the first patch, Shinnok's Hellsparks were a whopping plus 24 on block. If you don't understand frame data, don't worry about it, just know that plus 24 is a very long time in a game like this, giving Shinnok true, uninterruptible block strings that build loads of meter, do loads of chip damage, and on hit will full combo you anyway. And that's if Shinnok doesn't just decide to use the plus frames to throw out a overhead or a low mix-up. The final change in this patch was a buff to Necromancer. On launch, his falling unblockable only hit in the one direction, so you could see the startup and just punish him for free. Here, they gave him the option to steer it in front or behind. A welcome change. Bone Shaper went through some interesting changes as the Dark Beam used to be a mid, but in terms of frame data, it wasn't as potent for the character. In an early patch, the Dark Beam would be turned into a high attack. Sounds worse. However, it was made plus 8 on hit, which was much better. It gives Shinnok pressure at close range. And this was coupled by the fact that on launch, Shinnok's Scythe String that restands was actually not special cancelable. It still restood the opponent, but it was completely neutral on hit which is a bit of a risk, as you're not fully in the driving seat at a neutral state. The same patch Dark Beam was buffed on hit, the Scythe String could now be special cancelled, which totally changed Bone Shaper in general. It resulted in a period where Bone Shaper was a bit of a terror in tournament, particularly in late 2015, where the character was unbelievably popular. The Super Plus Hell Sparks, the newly buffed Dark Beam which was plus on hit and safe on block, and the never-ending pressure that Shinnok had through his Bone Shaper Forward 4 string and Hell Sparks combined. 
It was a very scary character, and particularly in EVO 2015, we saw a hefty amount of this character. Over time, Hell Sparks would become plus 5 on block, which is still good because plus frames always help in some way or another, but the period of never ending block strings into overhead low mix into even more was something that eventually phased out. Where eventually, Imposter returned as being the variation that players used the most to achieve success in tournament. Shinnok was used by a lot of players in various ways in various stages of the game's life. I mean, our very own Mustard here on the channel was a successful Shinnok main before Cyrax released with both Imposter and Bone Shaper. Wound Cowboy was a dedicated Shinnok main and had used all three variations in various offline and online events, particularly in the ESL Pro League days. In the final patch, we would see players like Dragon or Tekken Master really specialize in Imposter for certain matchups. In the final version of the game, where Shoulder Charge was one of the game's only remaining armored launchers, not even mentioning the speed of Meterless Charge was still enough to sometimes catch people off, and then you had the Meter Burn follow up for a combo, Imposter by the end had the mobility, the instant air portal, the zoning thanks to Hell Sparks alone, and even by the end when Imposter's Mimic special had actually had a bunch of frames chopped off just how long the stun would last, could still mix you up all over the place and was always a vortex character against stun or loopable specials that you would steal. Ever since that very first patch, Imposter was mixing you up. My point is, in the final patch, Shinnok had a ton of utility, and is still a character that many people fear and respect in high level. He may have been forgettable in the other two playable appearances, but with the foundations the two games provided in terms of special moves and, I suppose, general game plan, the expanded take on those in MKX led to a character that was incredibly powerful in tournament play the moment that very first balance patch hit the scene. And that's the complete competitive history of Shinnok, as we currently know it anyway. Thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you stick around for more content to come. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.